Welcome back, everyone. Now let's switch gears to the issues relating to peace in the Niger Delta. You know, there's always been this issue of fairness and whether or not people within that region have been treated fairly. But this has to do with sharing in that region. There is an ongoing controversy over the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC board, the political appointments, and those ones where they are gone to the Senate. An interest group in Bayosa is aggrieved, even in Delta State, well, there are grievances over uh, the, the tenure of the leadership of the board, which some of them say is not balanced. They believe the appointment and the rotation has not been fair. Let's get talking on this one. I have joining me from our Buja studio, a lawyer, uh, Jude Rex Oguku. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Jude. Uh, let's get to it. What exactly is the grievances of... Um, or are the grievances of uh, some of these people who believe that there's not been fairness and balance. Uh, the former SGF came, gave an order. The acting SGF came, gave a different order. What exactly is, is causing this grievance? Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you very much. You know, I think that the issue um, is surrounding extreme greed by a few individuals and this is likely to cause a lot of disharmony within the region you would agree that um, the niger delta development uh, commission board as it were or the act itself you know the circumstance for which it was enacted at, at, at first instance um, the then president olisha gobasanjo did not assent to that it took the nigerian people when i mean the nigerian parliament to come out knowing exactly the problems uh, we faced then to get this um, enactment passed. Now, since the passing of this enactment, you know, because of the very nature of which uh, we are, that is Niger Delta, it was uh, systematically uh, put in the law in such a way that uh, offices will be rotated among states. Now, there is right now a problem. The problem is that on the first, uh, on the first of November 2016, you know, uh, certain persons were appointed uh, into office. One full year into it and more, the group of persons who have been appointed, and I want to say this, you know, that, you know, they've been very unfair. They got the government or people in connivance to surreptitiously extend their tenure. And that is a very serious issue right now. Serious in the sense that the harmony, the peace that is presently being enjoyed by the, 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 the oil producing communities are about being distorted. And I think that, in all fairness, the federal government needs to look into it and do something fast. We expect, naturally, that their tenure expires sometimes in December, about the 8th of December. And any, any attempt to extend one day out of it, of course, will cause a lot of problems. Uh, if you look at this, I mean, there's the provision of uh, the act that established the NDDC, which provides that, and historically, of course, we've seen situations where tenures are extended by the state. If, for example, uh, Delta State is, is given that appointment, the appointment goes to Delta State. Even someone is changed, another person comes, it perhaps will be a Delta, and it, it, the person will use up that tenure. With what is, our, uh, is on the ground now, is it not a moral issue or is it a, of a legal issue now? If an appointment is made, a political appointment, that's what this is all about. And if, is it not for, uh, in the discretion of the person making the appointment? Well, the, the issue of uh, appointment within the NDDC is beyond just a political appointment. As it stands now, it has both security, um, social, political, and legal. Now, I want to say that it is a combination of all this that has led to the present grievances, you know, that is uh, being felt around the zone. First, the NDDC is based on the concept of state. In other words, appointment are based on state and not the individual. Anybody who is appointed is not because of his merit, simplicity, but based on the fact that they come out of the state. Now, if you look at the creation of the NDDC itself, if you look at it politically now, I mean, so, uh, legally now, if you take um, the, 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 the act as it is, you start from the, act, the portion, which is section 2, that creates the NDDC act. You find that you only become a member if you are, that is, the states are members and appointments are based on those states. Now, it is supposed to be rotatory. In other words, it's not something that you can come in and say because you, you, you merit it, you've had it. No. 
states will live in, in alphabetical order. And I can tell you, when it started, it started with Abia. From Abia, it went into to, to, to Aquaibom, Aquaibom to Bielsa, Bielsa, Cross River, and it is now supposed to be Delta. Um, but the, 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 the elements who hold those, those offices right now, I don't know how they did it. I don't want to be outright to say if somebody is corrupt somewhere along the line. But in all fairness, this is just unfair. It is injustice, and the federal government needs to correct that now. It is a time bomb. I repeat, it is a time bomb. Legally speaking, it is also not right. Now, we have been able to come across some documents purporting to have given legal opinion on why there should be extension you know, on, on, on the tenure. Whoever that preferred that advice must obviously have a tinted uh, um, 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 or perverse interest in, in, in the whole issue. I say this because, you see, for you to give an advice, first you need to take a holistic read. If other words, you give a community, a community reading of the act to understand why it was made in that way. The, 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 the act made it in such a way that at the end of a tenure, that is, since it is based on state, every state will have the four years. And in the near past, if you take it, I think that um, uh, Bayelsa never completed it. A certain person was there. When he did not meet up, the next person came in. And so is even the current one, which is obviously between Aquaibom and Cross River. Henshaw was in there. That appointment was terminated. Not because the government came up to say that anything was done. No. It was terminated due to political reasons. All right. If, and if, that if, is why, you see, because, because uh, uh, these people did not Because of the out, premise that you, you know, have given, yeah. just a moment, Jude, because of the premise that you have given to conclude this conversation on this matter now, you've given a premise of how dangerous it is to scuttle the opportunities and the chances of some of these states. But in your own right now, legally speaking, what do you think that the, pre uh, the, uh, the government or the federal government should be doing right now, just have about 30 seconds to, 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 to tell us that. Oh, very simple. The tenure of the Indodian Kuben end on the 8th of December. And we expect that after 8th of December, the president, of course, has a prerogative to appoint. We'll obviously look into the act and appoint different persons from the, as, as represented by the states. That is the only way I think right now that we're going to have succor and go back to a very uh, ammonial living. The, the, the risk here is that if we do what is happening right now, a certain persons will come in and want to elongate their stay in office because of probably the jealousy nature of the offices or otherwise. And that will create more problems. We don't need those problems right now. All right. What we need is peace. Right. We've lived in peace. Other states have handled these offices and they have not had cause or reason to argue or fight over it. I don't see why there should be an exception now. Thank you so much. They want to argue Jude, that Jude, it is Jude, a legal Jude, issue. We must Legally, go now. Jude Rex of Boku, thank you so much. Let me allow you, Kaldi, in just 30 seconds to, to round up this conversation. The peace we've seen in the Niger Delta yeah. and the politics, there's a lot of politics in that, in that region. How do you think the federal government should land? I think they, have, have they handled it well so far? Yeah, first, I don't think the federal government they've been able to handle situation regarding southeast until recently and south south Nigeria well. But on this, let me quickly say, you can't second guess and stampede what's going to happen in December 8. It has not happened yet. So it is wrong to actually assume that it's going to happen. But also, this also confirms for those who think when we break Nigeria into 26 countries, that the problem will go away. You see what's happening is between the South-South and we still have those problems in place. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kaudi. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, as always. Mr. Jude, the Rex of Boku, thank you also for your time. And that's our show for today. Many thanks for being part of it, everyone. I'm Sean Wakimaloe. Bye-bye.